Hey there, back. Welcome back. Okay, so learning target. Today we're going to use unit rates to determine the better buy. Expectations. Remember to use twice this video's length. My goal is 10 to 15 minutes, but we're probably going to ace that. <laughs> so we'll make up for the last two long ones. Remember to use their notes to your future self. So make sure that you are writing them legibly and pause, rewatch, slow down all the jazz. And let's do it before the video. Make sure that you're focusing. You're going somewhere with little distractions, very few distractions. Make sure you have highlighters or different colors handy and you're pausing the video, rewinding it, rewatching it, and you're moving at different speeds if you need to. Okay. I'm going to minimize that now. Table of contents. We're on the third one, better buy. For me, this is page three. If that's not page three for you, then figure out what page it is. Put that number down and we'll move on. So again, just like our learning target from the PowerPoint, it is I can use unit rates to determine the better buy. And we are going to move on with our definition first. So definition, we're going to define what is a better buy? Pause the video. Think about it. What does better mean? What does buy mean? What do you think a better buy is? So it is the least expensive price per unit, okay, i.e. it's the item with the lowest price and money is in the numerator. I know that's a lot to write, so pause the video if you want, and if you didn't keep up, there you go. All right, so we have one, we have two examples. That's it, that's it, that's all our notes, two examples. So example one is you and your sister, and you go buy erasers. So you buy three erasers, and they happen to be all sold together for $1. Your sister buys four erasers and her total is $1.25. Explain who got the better buy. Who had the better, the best deal? Who got the erasers for cheaper than the other person? So for you, I'm gonna change colors just to make sure this sticks, okay? So we, I guess you, okay, so you, you bought three erasers for $1. Now, something's funky with this ratio. Go back to your better buy definition, figure out how should I rewrite this? Cause this is not correct. Okay, so going back to this, notice money is in the numerator. Numerator is the top number. So this should be rewritten. So you bought $1 for three erasers. Okay, now if we did the division, $1 divided by three, we would find out this is about 33 cents per eraser. So we bought them at 33 cents per eraser. Now, what about the sister? And I'll change colors for the sister because it's a different person. So remembering that the $1 or the money should go in the numerator. Money is in the numerator. Money is in the numerator. So I'm going to have dollar sign, a dollar 25 in the numerator. And she bought four erasers. Okay. Now this should be a nice number, I think, but we're going to do the division. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to type a dollar 25. I'm going to divide by four erasers. Oh, never mind. Not a nice number. Okay. So this one is going to be about now this two, ah, it disappeared. Okay. So again, $1.25 divided by four. So this two 
is, a, is less than 5. So this 2 does not round this 1 up. So this is approximately 31 cents per eraser. Okay? So, and my computer is wanting to overheat. Okay, so 31 cents per eraser. Now, which one of you has the better buy? Your sister does, because she got her, each eraser was cheaper than all of our erasers. So each of our erasers, the unit price was 33 cents. Her unit price was 31 cents. So she had the better buy. So, sister has the lower unit price. And thus, the better buy. That way I have my reasoning to back me up and I have my answer, my conclusion. Thus, she has the better buy. Okay, so our last thing to work on is maybe I have pictures of it. Nope. Um, there we go. So this is really small, but this example is, and you can go to your grocery store and find a bunch of these. And I do this math every single time I shop at the grocery store or buy shoes or anything. Um, so the example is that you have six and six tenths ounces of goldfish for a dollar ninety nine and in the smack size like the milk carton kind of looking ones are two ounces but they are ninety nine cents so which one is the better buy pause the video and then come back and see the answer so with this one remember money is in the numerator so I'm going to have one ninety nine divided by six and six tenths ounces versus ninety nine cents divided by two ounces. Ninety nine divided by two is forty five plus four, so this is about forty nine forty nine point five cents per ounce. And then I don't know what that one is. One ninety nine divided by six point six. So this one is about thirty, and that one does not round up. So this is about thirty, but the five rounds the one up. So thirty point two cents per ounce. And if you're stuck on the rounding, think about it. Pause the video, figure it out. Okay. Um. So knowing this, which oh, and you can't even see my thing. I wrote all this out. There you go. <laughs> so looking at all that work, which one has the better buy? Um, actually, the 6.6 .6 ounce is the better buy by a long shot, which is why typically buying in bulk or like Sam's Club and Costco, they're supposed to be cheaper because you're getting them at a cheaper price because they're more wholesalers, but you get them in bulk. So getting things in bulk is typically cheaper. Alrighty, so I will let you go. Alrighty, have a great day.